Hello, everyone. Welcome to Learning and Technology, a guest lecture for Dr. Eiding's Introduction to Educational Psychology. My name is Dan Hoffman, an assistant professor in the Department of Learning Design and Technology here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I want to begin our talk today with a guiding question. And that question asks, what should an educated person know about learning and technology? Now, I think there's a number of different ways to answer this question, and we'll take a look at some of those different approaches to this question in this brief video. So one of the ways to answer this question is to think about how schools use technology. So one of the ways schools use technology is for instructional preparation. This has to do with, of course, educators preparing materials, communicating or collaborating with peers, students, and parents, locating digital resources, and creating lesson plans. Now, another way schools use technology is for instructional delivery. And this is when teachers and students use the actual technologies. For example, teachers might present instruction with a projector or a chalkboard or with PowerPoint or Google Slides. And students may use computers for all kinds of reasons, such as drill and practice, word processing, tutorials, or simulations. Those are all examples of technology for instructional delivery. And the third category is technology as a learning tool. And this has to do with when students use software and hardware to extend their abilities to solve problems, create products, or communicate and share their perspectives. And today, we're going to be focusing quite a bit on that third category, technology as a learning tool. Now, another way to answer the question, what should an educated person know about learning and technology, is to think about the potential areas of impact that technology is having on teaching and learning. Now, Bransford and colleagues argue there are five different areas of impact. The first area is technology can be used to bring new curricula to classrooms. The second area is to provide scaffolds and tools to enhance learning. The third area is to create opportunities for feedback, reflection, and revision. The fourth area is to build communities, both locally and globally. And finally, technology can help expand teacher training opportunities. Now, another thing an educated person needs to know about learning and technology has to do with this idea of learning in the 21st century. And here's a quote from a National Education Association report titled Preparing 21st Century Students for a Global Society. In this report, the NEA argues that life today is exponentially more complicated and complex than it was 50 years ago. This is true for civic life as much as it is for work life. In the 21st century, citizenship requires levels of information and technological literacy that go far beyond the basic knowledge that was sufficient in the past. For that reason, the National Education Association has argued that it's not enough for learners today to master certain content, such as reading, writing, and arithmetic. In fact, learners should go past that and really become proficient communicators, creators, critical thinkers, and collaborators. In other words, the four C's. So another important question that an educated person should know about learning and technology is the relationship between technology and the four C's. In other words, how can technology help support the four C's? Well, that same report argues that technology has a crucial role to play. While critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity can all be taught in a low-tech environment, 21st century students need to harness technology to be effective problem solvers, collaborators, communicators, and creators. And they must use technology to collaborate with others in communities beyond their own. So you can see this kind of inherent relationship between the four C's and technology. So what I want to do now is walk you through the four C's, define each of those 21st century skills, and take a look at specific technologies that are designed to support student development in each of those four areas. So let's start with critical thinking and problem solving. This shouldn't surprise anyone. Critical thinking has to do with reasoning effectively and using various types of reasoning, such as inductive and deductive reasoning. 
It also involves using systems thinking, analyzing how the parts of a whole interact with each other to produce overall outcomes in a complex system. And then, of course, critical thinkers and problem solvers have to make judgments and decisions. They have to analyze and evaluate alternative points of view, synthesize and make connections, so on and so forth. So what are some examples of how technology is being used to support learners' critical thinking and problem-solving skills? Well, one example is from a project named Brownfield Action. Brownfield Action is a web-based environmental science simulation. In the simulation, students investigate the possibility of groundwater contamination in a virtual fictional township by exploring the town's infrastructure, meeting pertinent parties, and performing hydrological surveys and tests to gain an understanding of the groundwater system of the municipality. So how does this tool support learning? Well, the tool allows learners to practice solving complex and ambiguous science problems. It allows them to explore real-world problems in environmental forensics, and it helps them develop professional skills related to environmental site assessments. Another example of how technology is being used to support critical thinking and problem solving can be seen in the project Intelligence Squared US. And some of you may have heard of this before, but it is a web-based forum for balanced and intelligent debate. And how does this foster critical thinking and problem solving skills? Well, the tool allows learners to digest intellectual and viewpoint diversity, and it also fosters a respect for contrary opinions and, at the same time, raising awareness about timely and important issues facing our society. So those are two examples of technologies being used to support the first C of critical thinking and problem solving. So let's talk a little bit about communication. Well, communication has to do with, of course, articulating thoughts and ideas effectively. And students need to be able to do that in different ways. It also involves listening effectively and deciphering meaning, including knowledge, values, attitudes, and intentions. And it also means using multiple media and technologies and know how to assess the impact and their effectiveness a priori. So let's look at some examples of how technology is being used to support learners' communication skills. One example is the platform Flipgrid. Now, what is it? Well, it's a social learning platform for recording and sharing short videos. The idea here is that learning is social, personal, and can happen anywhere in any time. And it's really about making connections and exploring and allowing everyone to talk about and discuss and build a shared meaning of a particular topic or idea. So Flipgrid supports learning because it allows learners to practice sharing their ideas, stories, and work. It allows them to respond to the voices of their peers, and it also allows them to create remixes and collections of existing related videos. Now, another example of a technology being used to support communication skills is a project known as LISA. Now, LISA is an online tool for practicing discourse between instructors and students. Now, the instructor in this case is a new classroom teacher, and the students, as shown in the picture, are actually simulated 3D avatars. The premise with this particular tool is that new classroom teachers can practice practice in this safe, simulated environment to hone their specific pedagogical and behavioral practices that they're going to need once they get into the classroom. It gives them a space to actually try new strategies in advance so they can learn how different students react and hear the words that they're saying and how dialogue actually happens in a classroom context. So those are two projects looking at how technology is being used to support communication skills. So let's talk about collaboration. Now, of course, collaboration has to do with the ability to work effectively and respectfully with diverse teams. 
It requires students to exercise flexibility and willingness to help in making necessary compromise to accomplish a common goal. And it also requires students to assume shared responsibility for collaborative work. So what are some examples of how technology is being used to support learners' collaboration skills? One example is Symbolicon. Symbolicon is a web-based simulation of political and economic developments. And in this simulation, every student in the simulated world leads a single country, such as China or Germany or Brazil. And their countries start out completely undeveloped. And what they have to do is, over time, develop their countries. And what the students quickly realize is that they don't have all of the resources they need to develop their countries as far as they want to. And so, how does Symbolicon support student learning? Well, it allows learners to manage the economic realities of developing a real country in a global context. It also allows learners to balance economic development and environmental sustainability at local and global levels. And it also allows students to negotiate internationally for resources and products. So this is an excellent example of a digital learning environment designed to foster collaboration skills. Another example is quite obvious, which is Google's so-called G Suite, this online suite of collaboration and productivity tools. Now, I know many of you have used this, but let's step back and think about how does this tool support learning? Well, when teams are using these collaboration and productivity tools, it forces students to divide up roles and expertise. They also have to manage team access, responsibility, and communication, and they get opportunities to practice distributed dialogue and decision-making as it relates to their team project. So, an excellent example of a platform that's really being used to support collaboration skills. Now, the fourth C has to do with creativity and innovation. And as you all know, creativity and innovation involves using a wide range of idea creation techniques. In other words, brainstorming, creating new and worthwhile ideas, working creatively with others to develop, implement, and communicate new ideas, and finally, implement innovation. We want to give students opportunities to act on their creative ideas, to make a tangible, useful contribution to whatever area they're working in. So, what are some examples of how technology is being used to support learners' creativity and innovation skills? Well, one classic example is Scratch, the visual programming language for creating interactive stories, games, and animations. As you know, this tool uses a drag-and-drop programming language that helps students externalize their thinking through code. It lets them express themselves creatively by creating different types of games or animations or even interactive stories. And it also allows learners to realize that what happens on a computer is not magic, but is the result of computational thinking or the step-by-step -step procedures encapsulated in a set of instructions that you give to the computer. Another great example of a technology being used to support creativity and innovation skills is the platform called WeVideo. WeVideo is a collaborative, web-based video editing platform. It's developed for schools and it can be used in any browser. And the idea here, it comes with all kinds of B-roll and existing clips, images, and audio tracks. And the idea here is that learners can apply various literary skills to developing their own authentic digital media. They can experiment with different genres of communication and expression. And importantly, they can experience the stages of the production process, how to go from an idea through designing and developing that idea all the way to publishing a real live video that can be shared with classmates or parents and families and beyond. So again, two more examples of how technology is being used to support learners' creativity and innovation skills. So stepping back, what have we done? Well, we talked about how schools use technology 
We talked about the potential areas of impact technology is having on teaching and learning. We talked about learning in the 21st century in the four C's, and we looked at a variety of technologies being used to support students as they strive to become proficient communicators, creators, critical thinkers, and collaborators. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Thanks, and have a great week.